So we are in uh, SME, have done research, mainly European, on um, building um, personal data ecosystems, but gradually we kind of start to split services from the data. And so we're focusing totally on the end-to-end -end trust assurance of data in, in ecosystems. And there we, we have, of course, user control. It's 10 years we've been working on user control. I think this is gradually being solved. But the next thing is how do we uh, give GDPR proof with digital transformation? So digital transformation adds new things for companies, much more analytics. Um, and how do we deal with that with GDPR? This one? Just uh, this, uh, the arrow. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we built this kind of uh, um, data middleware utility on top of which you can easily build ecosystems. Okay. And so for individual organizations, um, we're slowly getting into the ethical industrialization of personal data. It's not that the user has control and and that's it. No, now data needs to be reused, um, and that again requires lots of trust of the individual, and that has to come from a, let's say, a technical, legal, uh, contractual framework. The three will work together in getting there. But that's the new norm. So we come from API ecosystems. The Americans were have beaten us in Europe, and now we put the user in the center. But that requires a lot of changes. So. We have to rethink the relationship between individual organizations. Um, for organizations, it's the capacity to interact. It's not my term, it comes from Google, sorry, from, uh, from Gartner. Um, and so it's the way companies now start to invent new services involving other companies, APIs, to deliver new services. And so privacy here is needed both for transactions and analytics. Uh, this needs to be uh, uh, quite well understood. So the whole notion of data ownership, I think we need to kind of forget and replace it with access, usage, and lead rights, and maybe some other things along the line, but it's all about rights of the data. And let's say your health data, you don't have the delete rights, right? But you do have the access rights. So in getting more smart data for companies to work with, uh, we will have to start using cross-domain uh, and cross-concept uh, uh, with that. And in order to get there, I think data ethics is the new way of solving a lot of the problems there of how we can solve things technically. And so all these elements are involved in there. It's quite a lot. And that's the, the real challenge for personal data in, in order to get where we want to be. <clears throat> so we have been working on this um, uh, for a couple of time, and let's say our architecture that came out of it has now been accepted by um, WSO2, which is a global middleware company. And so we're kind of reinstalling everything into um, um, a, a new system. Um, and that can then be used either for the main specific data utilities, so where companies can build ecosystems, but also regions. I believe Europe is uh, a Europe of regions. And Europe is also 95% SMEs who have no clue on how to do this. So we need to help them uh, with the data utility on top of which then they can build their systems. And so separating data and services is um, having this data utility with end-to-end -end trust assurance, cloud-based, and in our case, we also built uh, a PDS, uh, which is uh, attribute-based control. We're actually using the uh, original NSA system, the Cumulo, uh, and we protect it with the Zach um, plugin. Um, on top of that, runs this technical legal contractual framework. So you look at the GDPR, you build contracts, and you support a lot of it by technology. And doing so, this data utility then kind of creates an equal playing field for personal data. So it's not just a company doing something. Uh, we need to build this what Gart is calling a civilization infrastructure. So <clears throat> that's what we're having there, uh, which both contains um, personal data and analytics. And I'll come back on that, on that uh, later. And so on top of that, you have, uh, can build an API ecosystem 
uh, where APIs are authenticated and connect with data on the general. So again, you need to do on, to have that a number of uh, um, uh, measures there. So we're, we're not involved in apps, for instance. Uh, we are using the rights mechanism uh, for permissions and for publications. Um, of course, there's one or more personal data stores in it, and we need to kind of standardize what the personal data store is and how it reacts with the system. Um, we're doing transaction analytics, and for every transaction, we also get a real-time audit. I'll explain how that works also. So, doing that, um, it's very important to create this equal playing field for companies to uh, build uh, um, applications and ecosystems on top of it. Um, so that way we kind of create a business opportunity in Europe uh, following GDPR. And one of the elements of how to get user trust is that we're using ecosystem-wide, pairwise pseudonymization, which is persistent. So a company will get the same uh, pseudonyms or or even an API will get the same pseudonyms, but another one will get other ones. But there's no correlation of tokens there. And so, all that is trying to build the trust with users, um, so companies can can get into digital transformations, including in democratization analytics. We kind of um, um, are denying the need that uh, this is an important an important. Thing. And so they are the custodians of the data, uh, but they also need to be helped to uh, uh, either by four parties or by, by people to, uh, to deal with it. Okay, so in essence it comes that we have this personal data management for users, and on top of that we have a broad API management of all kinds of applications for companies. Um, and so um, now GDPR uh, lays some extra load on how digital transformation should be doing. So you could think that GDPR is like a supplement of digital transformation. Um, and so all the elements that I just showed, identity management, analytics, IoT, should fit in there. And then we have, I think, a, a strong system. <clears throat> we do that by actually noting both on the sending side and on the receiving side what happens if you do a transaction. We call it the ecosystem connector that actually checks the policies. We're using sticky policies. The policies travel always with the data. We check if the policies are honored, either as a permission or through applications. And what is done, then it's then a, 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 um, a, a, an audit file is sent to an immutable database. Today we're using immutability by policies, but we could easily use um, um, a distributed ledger uh, for that matter. Okay, and so we have this uh, kind of PDS, API platforming, and we're using the whole notion of smart edges at the endpoints, including the personal data store uh, and the maps. Anything is encrypted in between. So, one of the issues is that when companies want to do um, APIs, they often have complex APIs. In this case, nine APIs need to be triggered, and we, we are able to send them out in one blow, and then they follow their, 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 their route on, on the network. Uh, and so that is good for the one that uh, is the uh, data controller. Um, <clears throat> so more a bit in detail. Uh, when a message comes in um, if, with the company, uh, we have this uh, ecosystem connector that uh, reads the headers, uh, reads the uh, IDs, um, has a PEP and deals with the sticky policies, does all the crypto and so forth, and then sends the data back to, to the API. Um, what happens then is that when that happens, an audit summary is uh, generated and is sent to an immutable database on one hand, and the full audit record is often kept by the company. We also can do this on the other side, when you um, want to launch an API call. I'll go a bit quickly because I want to do. And in the end, we end up with a system where 
for every API for every web service uh, website. Uh, we have this ecosystem connector, which actually is uh, rounding the three elements, single sign-on, API client and provider, and tracks what happens um, when you go to the website uh, and sends it over all the bus to a mutual database. So typically, when you go from a website, sending a, a request to an API, the identifier is changed, and that's an immediate service going to an identity mapper that changes the pseudonym here to the pseudonym there and through all the things. Finally, we also have analytics connected to the personal data store, often using open source, but we also have analytics as a service where companies can upload their combination analytics to um, close into the ecosystem, and eventually companies can get the data and do on-premise analytics. So you have various size of analytics in how, to, how you want to do this, and every time the, uh, say the trust around it is different. Okay, that was it. Thank you.